We were able to catch up with Lowell Bennett in his race shop recently. Lowell raced against Alan Kowicki at Kakana, Slinger, and other racetracks around Wisconsin. Listen as he tells us if Alan was a better race car driver or truck driver. So what I'm doing with these Zoom calls is um, I'm gathering a few people for the last seven days of the Kowicki program, and uh, we plan on posting the last seven days of um, our interaction, and um, I'm going to ask you a couple questions, and you just kind of can share your moments and uh, you yeah. know share your memories with um, Alan. So yeah, go ahead. All right. First question: What kind of racer was Alan? Um, conservative, but yet aggressive. I guess is a good way to put it. Um, he knew how to get everything he could out of a car. Um, he was a, a thinker. You know, he was, you know, he went to the Milwaukee School of Engineering and, and so he looked at things from an engineering standpoint rather than as a racer sometimes. So he was, think, uh, he was good at what he did. There's no doubt. Yeah. Do you think so? You kind of said it. Um, do you think he's kind of on more of the aggressive side of a race car driver or kind of more laid back? he had times of both, I would have to say, you know, it depended on, you know, what he had for equipment and, you know, um, Alan started basically on the dirt, like I did at, you know, I used to run at Oshkosh where I raced years and years ago. So, um, you know, times changed and it depended at, at what point of his career, you know, if you're talking about his career just before he went down to NASCAR, yeah, he was, he was quite aggressive. Mm -hmm. so alan was known as very hard to get along with as a race car driver how did you get along with him on the track i never had a problem with alan at all um alan wasn't really um that social you know as i think his mind was always going the engineering mind and so you know the only time that I can remember we built a new car, Mike Granderson and I did, and, and debuted it down at Speed Weeks in Florida. And uh, that was the first time Alan really paid any attention to me at all, because um, that car was so exotic and extreme. So, okay. but uh, that was the first time, but I didn't have a lot of interaction with him in the pits, mm -hmm. you know, not really. Yeah. yeah. Knew a lot about him. Yeah. I was if, the kid like you are now. <laughs> <laughs> if Alan were here today, what do you think his role in the racing industry would be? I think that Alan would have been a team owner. Mm -hmm. I, I definitely think he would have got to that point where, you know, maybe he would have stepped out of the driving part of it and, and been a team, um, team owner. And, um, you know, I, I'm quite sure he would have stayed in racing because that was his whole life. Mm -hmm. You know, his father was in racing. I don't know how much you know about that. But. A little bit, yep. 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 So. Okay. Do you think he's better on the inside or the outside? When he raced? Yeah. I don't think it mattered. Yeah. I don't, I don't, uh, I don't think he had a preferred, you know, peel everybody off the bottom or drive around the top. I mean, where, wherever he could find, find lane. He took it. Yeah, made it happen. Yep. You remember that day that Alan died in the plane crash, and what were your thoughts after hearing about it? I just could not believe that. Um, it just, it's just like when Davy died, and and uh, you know, there, there's um, there's quite a few guys that died in aircraft. I mean, the guy that used to fly Dick Trickle around, same thing. The, the day that Alan died, I just, you know, he won the championship the year before and, and it's like, wow, how, you know, just bang, they're gone, you know, mm -hmm. yeah. and then it's the world adjusting to the new normal. Yeah. It can change in a second. What do you, what do you miss most about him? Um, I knew Alan quite well through Mike Randerson too. Now Mike and I built the very first Rander car, which was a, was an underslung tailed car. And, 
before anybody else built anything like that. That was the car the whole country has copied. And so Mike worked with Alan and um, Alan ran his cars also, that, that new car. And um, my favorite story that I got from Mike about Alan was that he was such an engineer and so smart in so many different ways and a great race car driver, he could not back up a trailer. He would come over to Randerson's with his car and to do anything and he'd park it on the street and Mike Randerson would have to go back it into the, into the uh, driveway because Alan could not get the, get it figured out as how to back up a trailer. Hmm. That's kind of a funny story. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you think that's your greatest memory of him or do you have a different greatest memory of him? Um, another great memory of him was we were racing red, white, and blue. I think it was red, white, and blue, and it was a twin race. And um, it was on a Sunday afternoon at Kakana. And we all came into pit and it was a, it was a break. So I think it was a twin race. And I looked over. And Alan did not have one guy working on his crew. It was all women, an all woman crew that day. And so, huh. and they were dressed kind of nice, and everybody was everybody was looking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, an all woman crew. Uh, so, my guys always laughed about that. That was probably my favorite thing is when when he had all the women, and I can still remember he was parked on the quarter mile right in between turn three and four and that's where he was pitted i could just see him there yet yeah huh how do you think he got so smart about you know chassis wise and shock wise and motor wise and things like that i think that you know his dad was a great mind and his dad was very involved in racing and i think that it was a lot of this is passed down father to son father to son and, um, you know, I think that's where a lot of it went to. And then he wanted to take it to the next level. And so, was, you know, he went to the Milwaukee School of Engineering. And, and I mean, there's some great, brilliant minds come out of there. So, mm -hmm. I mean, he had a great mind to begin with. And then, um, you know, he, Alan got to be with good people. You know, Mike Randerson um, in the day was probably the smartest chassis guy in the country. And, um, you know, he hooked up with some of the good people and, you know, he educated himself just like we all do is, is, you know, you learn from other people. Mm -hmm. No, he, it's cool listening to all these stories that you, that people have of him. He's just a, such a unique guy. It's, it's cool to tune into and listen to these stories that yeah. people have, you know, I like hearing about all, all of it, how it started yeah. and how, you know, how he developed his racing career and how he went through the levels. It's, it's really neat to hear. So um no i really appreciate you for taking the time out of your day to hop on this call and yeah. talk to me a little bit there's one yeah. other thing that was kind of cool that we did it back in the day is that we would run kakana in the afternoon for red white and blue and that was a that was a big deal i mean there was you know there'd be 40 50 cars and i mean that was a big big race the red white and blue it's not like what it is today i mean it was a prestigious deal and um, we'd run there during the day. And then um, Alan and I, and maybe one or two other guys in the day used to switch a car over and hightail it down to Slinger and race that night, catch two of them in a day, same car. And um, so, you know, we'd run and switch gears and everything, load them in a trailer and, you know, head down to Slinger and race again. So, yeah. You know, that's what we, did. we raced, you know, I always, I always tell people we raced five nights a week years ago and you worked on the car one or two nights. Now you work on the car, you know, five nights to race at one night. Yeah. So it's changed a lot. Yeah. Yeah. And technology has developed and all sorts of things. It's just crazy nowadays how it is compared to back then. You know what I mean? So, well, thank you. I, I mean, I really appreciate you for hopping on hey, this no call and 